Good morning. I don't understand any of the articles or research papers that we're linking to today. So if in the next few minutes you feel the urge to go to the comments section and say that this guy doesn't seem to know much about semiconductors, I'll save you the trouble. I'm already aware. And it's one reason why so many of our videos are about 10 minutes instead of an hour and 10. But it does seem that many of the breakthroughs that are coming out of Chinese labs are guaranteed to put some of our biggest companies out of business, given time, and not a lot of time. This is a letter from a select committee of the U.S. Congress to Gina Raimondo. She was the Commerce Secretary during the Biden administration. Note the date, 27 October of last year. And in the letter, congressmen are asking Commerce to include silicon photonics equipment and products on our semiconductor sanctions list for China. Silicon photonics is the next front in the semiconductor competition with China, and the United States is currently not winning, preventing U.S. investment and know-how and supporting domestic innovation, though, will ensure continued American leadership in silicon photonics and other critical emerging technologies. The concern expressed here is that semiconductor manufacturers are bumping up hard now against the physical limitations of making ever smaller computer chips using silicon. So they're looking for new solutions, new materials and technologies that can get around these limitations, and photonics is one of those approaches. Photonics uses light instead of electrons, and insiders believe that photonic chips will represent monumental improvements in speed and performance, a 1,000 times increase. Their other concern is that China is already heading that way, and Chinese officials have said so publicly. China hopes to change lanes and jump ahead of the U.S. just by using different materials altogether. In photonics, the Chinese labs are already making big strides. This is news from a lab in Wuhan, where researchers claim to have achieved a milestone in silicon photonics, which could help China overcome the limitations of current chip design and become self-sufficient in semiconductors despite U.S. sanctions. But note the date stamp on this one, 6 October 2024. So this article dropped on October 6, and exactly three weeks later, Congress tells Commerce that we need to close the door on our silicon photonics technology, or China might one day be able to build light-based chips. Moving on, JFS Laboratory used laser light source on silicon chips for the first time in China. Here again, they explain the problem that we're nearing the limits of what's possible using electrons, so they're moving to light particles, photons, instead. This Wuhan lab is just one of several in China who are pushing into silicon photonics, and other global companies are in the race, too. TSMC believes that photonics integrated with silicon will be a paradigm shift in the industry. NVIDIA and Intel, Huawei, so these are big companies with big money, all working on photonic chips. But the advances will probably happen in China faster than elsewhere. China is being forced to innovate around the import bans of EUV machines used to make the traditional silicon chips. In contrast, photonics chips can be built domestically, in China that is, using older equipment and materials. Here's the money quote, China is being hindered in the manufacture of traditional silicon chips, so they're motivated to devote a lot more resources to the next generation semiconductors. So that's some of what China is doing in photonic chips, the light particles on silicon chips. Other Chinese labs are getting away from silicon altogether and using different materials and new shapes to design chips. Here they use the term changing lanes again, and they've built the fastest ever chip using bismuth oxyselenide instead of silicon. Their research path was born of necessity and the need to get around all the silicon-based technologies that are on the sanctions lists. This team from Peking University built a two-dimensional transistor. It's super flat 
which is 40% faster than our fastest three nanometer chips and consumes less energy besides. Using different materials is a shortcut, but using different materials with a two-dimensional design is changing lanes. It's how this lead researcher explains things. Their research was built using stuff they already had sitting around. They just needed to think about the tech in a new way. They built what's called a gaff et to get around the physical limitations of silicon. 40% faster at 10% energy savings. Now they're moving to the mass production phase, betting that this is a smarter way forward than building devices for silicon chips. This was the abstract the group published in Nature about a year ago, where they explained their strategy to build their two-dimensional semiconductor. And a different Chinese research team last month, February, explains how 2D bismuth oxyselenide in different chemical combinations are strong alternatives to silicon chips. The compound used by the team at Peking University has outstanding photoresponse performance across different light spectra. Here is a summary from TrendForce, and this one also predates the congressional letter to lock the barn door after the horses are gone and China blows past our chip sanctions again. September 2024 for this one. Zhao Tong University in Shanghai launched a photonic chip pilot line in Wuxi with expectations to build 10,000 wafers a year, beginning now. Jinan in Shandong province, mass production of lithium niobate crystals ramping up eventually to 250,000 per year of whatever those are. Lithium tantalate wafers used here with photonic chips. Those guys are in Shanghai. Tsinghua University in Beijing with the Taiji 2 optical training chip for neural networks and optical computing systems. And here's Peking University again with the world's first fully programmable optical artificial atomic lattice. This is how Chinese solve problems then by throwing a lot of very smart people in a lot of places at a problem. They lock them in a room and tell them not to come out until you guys have solved the dynamic topological phase transitions problem with multiple lattice insulators. See you all in a few months. And this is apparently how we respond to Chinese solving those problems. Our lawmakers who don't understand any of these technologies either read about what Chinese labs have already done. Then they send a letter to our Commerce Department and say we need to lock up our technologies that the Chinese didn't even use. It's performance art. This clown show that we put on to pretend that this is what our China containment policy is. This is Deep Seek squared. Deep Seek blew up our markets when we learned that 100 kids in Hangzhou with $6 million built a large language model that was as good as the ones that we've got, which cost a thousand times more. What happened here, though? Is it true that these five guys right here, that kid in the front doesn't look like he's old enough to even drive, but they look around their lab, they find some bismuth, tried to make a semiconductor. No, that didn't work. Well, let's make it super flat, like a pancake that's an atom thick. Oh, look, it works. And it's 40% faster, too. What's our plan for that? when these guys are given some more money and some more people? And what is the reaction to Wall Street to all that when Chinese foundries are mass producing semiconductors based on silicon photonics or bismuth oxyselenide? That's not a rhetorical question. It is literally a $6 trillion question. Deep Seek wiped out hundreds of billions in shareholder equity when we learned that strong AI models can be built using older semiconductors. And so the demand for the cutting edge semiconductors isn't as high as we thought. But Deep Seek is software. This is hardware. And if the Chinese here are right, our companies are building semiconductors wrong. This is Fushan Lake, Yunnan province. Be good.
но мало что приятно помогли этим хулиганам. Какой, какой же ты ужасник.